And we are back, 4.59 the time. Top stores are working on this morning. Drivers of the Bay Bridge will see a change after Labor Day's closure there of the, of the uh, span. Fast track users, in fact, will see a mini toll plaza taken out. More details coming up in a minute. And the search for five-year-old Hassani Campbell continues this morning. The tip line that was set up to help find Hassani is... And Nathaniel Burris, the man accused of killing two people at the Richmond San Rafael Bridge Toll Plaza, will be back in court again today. We'll tell you why in just a moment. But first, a quick check of weather and traffic. And we'll begin with weather this morning. A live picture of the Golden Gate Bridge and some fog up there again this morning. A lot like what we saw yesterday and the day before yesterday and the day before that. Drew's tracking it all. Good morning, Drew. Good morning, James. And the day before that and the day before that. Yes, indeed. Looking at once again a condition of some morning clouds and fog and using that same Golden Gate shot. A further look of those uh, foggy conditions. And here's some headlines. We'll see more clouds and fog once again this morning. Clearing into the afternoon as we head into the middle of the afternoon, but a mild forecast around the bay. Temperatures continuing to see a minor cooling trend. Nothing too severe and not a drastic cool down, but temperatures uh, very mild for the area. Nothing too heavy. And we'll have a full check of that in just a few minutes. But in the meantime, let's get a full check or rather a quick check of traffic with George. Thanks, Drew. Good morning. Overnight road work wrapping up on 238 here on Interstate 80, the Bay Bridge Toll Plaza. No backup, no delay. It's an easy ride. I'll have a complete traffic check coming right out, but I I can tell you coming right up rather, but I can tell you right off. It's likely to be good news. James. All right, George, thank you very much. Meanwhile, again, our developing story this morning, the Bay Area in just two weeks from now is about to see again a closure of the Bay Bridge. And in addition to that big project, which involves installing that new section, that detour section there, right as the bridge meets Yerba Buena Island, there will also be some major improvements to the toll plaza itself. And that work will affect fast track users who use West Grand or 880 to get to the Bay Bridge. Those fast trackers apparently will be going through uh, that go through the mini toll plaza now, also known as lanes 18, 19, and 20. Well, when the Bay Bridge closes, that mini toll plaza and the walkway there will be taken away. Yeah, they'll be removed. MTC spokesman John Goodman, or Goodwin, that is, says he understands why these improvements have been overshadowed by the big detour project. By removing the mini toll plaza, there will actually be more room for cars, what the traffic engineers call vehicle storage just upstream from the metering lights. So it just won't be so crowded. And here is what it'll look like without that mini toll plaza and the covered walkway on the right-hand side. There you see the lanes uh, that used to number three lanes, now down to two, but the MTC says they will be wider lanes, so they'll be more convenient and easier to get through. And we also have live pictures this morning of the Bay Bridge toll plaza this morning. Again, just a live picture to show you and remind you that things will be changing not only on the span, but at the Bay Bridge toll plaza itself come uh, Labor Day weekend. And again, we're only 14 days away from that. So remember, you will not be able Able to use the bridge on Labor Day. And again, it's a longer closure. So Thursday night now to Tuesday morning. So you will have no bridge access on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And depending on when you travel into work Tuesday morning, you might not have bridge uh, the bridge there for you either. It won't be scheduled to reopen on Tuesday till 5 a.m. More on this, though, coming up throughout the morning here as we roll on till 11 a.m. In the meantime, the last bridge closure two years ago went rather smoothly. However, there is one major difference. In 2007, the work was being being done on the ground. This time around now, it's more than 100 feet up in the air in a spot where wind can actually gust up to 30 miles per hour. If that happens, crews have to stop working, so their ability to finish on time uh, it really is in the hands of Mother Nature this morning. Yeah, so we've got some variables there that in play that weren't in play last time around. So we're going to obviously be keeping our eye on that and keep you updated on their progress throughout the weekend. Meanwhile, Caltrans has built in 30 hours of extra time to account for those wins. So they say missing that Tuesday morning deadline in their minds is highly unlikely. But obviously we will be there keeping an eye on it all. In the meantime, obviously, uh, we're following this on our website as well. In fact, cronford.com uh, has been uh, redesigned to give you the very latest. So head there, um, click around, see what you need to uh, know to get around. We've got alternate routes for you. We've got uh, links to the ferries, links to the other bridges as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind.
Make your plans now. Don't wait till the last minute or you'll be stuck without a way of getting uh, either to or from the peninsula. All right, at 504, though, let's get over to the traffic desk right now. George Rass keeping an eye on the commute this morning. Good morning, George. Good morning, James. We'd also like to mention that uh, the spokesperson for Caltrans for the Bay Bridge Project, Bart Ney, will be with us later this morning, and we'll be talking with him daily leading up to the uh, shutdown of the Bay Bridge as uh, they tick off their punch list, if you will, of things that need to be accomplished before the closure can actually proceed. So we'll get a look at what those are, and we'll have an opportunity to follow along in that process leading right up to the closure starting two weeks from today. To starting down toward right. Oakland Airport, and if we do have low ceilings and delays at SFO later this morning, they're not yet in place this morning. James? All right, thank you very much, George. 505 is the time this morning, and again, we're still following the latest developments out of Oakland, where police there admit that without any new tips, they really are running out of places to search for five-year-old Hassani Campbell. The child has been missing for nine days now, and police are desperate for your help in keeping this case alive. In fact, here's former prosecutor Jim Hammer speaking about the body language of the foster parents, the focus of the investigation so far. Jim Hammer is a former San Francisco prosecutor. He offered his take on some of the behavior of Lewis Ross and Jennifer Campbell, who are Hassani's foster parents. Investigators can't help but look at the last person who was with the, the missing person, and that's uh, the, the foster father here. And again, what investigators are looking at is looking at every action of everybody. Is something outside the norm? Are people acting unusually? You go talk to social services. You want to find the record straight? You go to them and you ask them why they placed them with us. <laughs> because we gave a damn. I just want him home. I just want him safe. I just want him in his bed, in her house, with his sister playing and laughing. It's, it stands out a bit that he spends a lot of time defending himself. Again, that can be for good reason. The foster mother in the hand speaks more typically like most people have lost a kid. It's focusing on the kid and the loss of the child and the child and the child. Hammer says there may be a totally legitimate reason for Ross to be acting defensive. If this man is 100% innocent, which we have to presume at this point, there's nothing more horrifying than being focused on as a possible suspect. Hammer explains the possibilities that detectives are considering in their investigation. And then there are two possibilities in any case like this. It's either a stranger abduction which is what we hear about in the news a lot, you know, some, some guy in a dark car, you know, grabbing a kid off the street. Those are relatively unusual, but they get the headlines. Unfortunately, the more typical cases, it's someone who knows the kid, family member, something like that. Jeff Bush, Cron 4 News. Meanwhile, police and Crime Stoppers of Oakland announced a reward of up to $10,000 Monday for information leading to the whereabouts of five-year-old Hassani Campbell. Oakland police, though, say a tip line that was set up in hopes that it would help find the missing boy is operating again after numerous calls from one tipster tied up that line. Police spokesman Jeff Thomas says the Crime Stoppers tip line is up and running. Um, Forty messages, though, were left by that one caller. None of those calls incidentally turned out to be or credible. The line was set up in hopes of obviously finding uh, some information that would help lead authorities to Hassani Campbell and again that reward now up to $10,000. So if you think you have legitimate information, give that call, uh, give that number a call. Meanwhile, for continuing coverage, obviously keep it here. We're going to be following this story for however long it takes until authorities uh, get some sort of conclusion here to this case. Cron4.com, a good resource. Any new information we will post there. Uh, so keep checking often for that. All right, at 5.09, we also have another story to update you on new this morning. Nathaniel Burris, the man accused of killing two people last week at the Richmond San Rafael Bridge Toll Plaza, is due back in court today, although he's not expected to enter a plea when he returns to Contra Costa County Superior Court. During his initial hearing last week, the 46-year-old told the judge that he wanted to plead guilty. He also insisted that he didn't need a lawyer. Prosecutors say Burris has since agreed to let a public defender represent him. He'll be again in court today. Meanwhile, Massachusetts Senator Ted Kennedy is asking leaders in his home state to change a law now to allow a speedy replacement of him in Congress if he uh, is to die or step down here in the near future. Under current Massachusetts law, a special election has to be held to fill any vacancy, but Kennedy wants Governor Deval Patrick to appoint an interim senator in the five months that it would take to hold an election. Kennedy aides, though, insists there is no change in his condition since he was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor back in May of 2008.
All right, 510 on the clock. Let's get over to the Weather Center now. Drew Harmon keeping an eye on our Thursday morning forecast. Good morning, Drew. Good morning, James. Looking at, once again, another mild forecast all around the Bay Area. We still have plenty of morning clouds and fog. And See the coast temperatures off. sticking around 60 or 61 degrees all the way into next week. It's 512 on the Cron 4 Morning News. Time to take a short break, but join us in just a couple of minutes as we return with more top stories, weather and traffic.